Hello, welcome. My name is Cameron Stewart. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at SolarEdge. And today we're gonna to talk about the SolarEdge Home Load Controller. This is the latest and greatest in the SolarEdge Home ecosystem. Let's talk about what the load controller is. So the load controller is a little device like this that uses the SolarEdge Home Network and it's going to control and turn on and off your loads with a third party switch. In this case, it's gonna be a contactor and you can control those loads locally at the device or via the cloud using my solar edge the unique thing about this it's not just a load shedding device but what makes solar edges load controller really intuitive is we can not only use it for shedding loads when we go into backup but we can also use it in time of use markets or zero export markets and we can set our pool pump to only run during off peak times. Like we don't want our pool pump to run during on peak times. And we can manually override that stuff using the cloud. And you can't do that with a manual timer out at the pool pump today. The Solar Edge Home ecosystem includes our battery, our load controller, the home hub and home wave inverters, the backup interface. So if you're using the Solar Edge Home network, you can talk to the Solar Edge Home load controller. Back when I installed 20 years ago, we didn't have to worry about the ecosystem. We only installed an inverter and modules and that was it. But solar systems today are becoming more complex and solar edge is helping you through this by making devices like this that are easy to install. They don't have communication wiring. They can be installed at the appliance or next to the main panel, wherever you want. Uh, it's really easy and I hope to demonstrate that through the webinar today. So let's talk about what the Solar Edge smart devices include. So we have the brand new load controller. We also have our Solar Edge hot water heater and our EV charger. Some devices coming out next year might be the Solar Edge smart switch and socket. So you might see those at a later date. Uh, but today's focus is going to be on the Solar Edge home load controller. The load controller is rated up to eight amps. So I want to reiterate, if you're controlling a small load that's less than eight amps, you can wire this in line, that's allowed, but not typically what we wanna control. We wanna control large devices like pool pumps, uh, third-party EV chargers, if you're not using the Solar Edge EV charger, hot tubs, stuff like that. Those are the types of loads that we wanna control, HVAC systems, pool pumps, well pumps, those are the devices we want to control. And they oftentimes are rated at 60 amps or 40 amps or 30 amps. So that's not going to be controlled by the load controller. What we're going to do is we're going to wire a contactor in and the load controller is going to control the contactor. Okay. So we can get off the shelf contactors, uh, all the way up to you know single pole, two pole, three pole in this case, all the way up to 60, 80, 100 amps, and the load controller is gonna be able to control the contactor. So most solar installers don't have a lot of experience working with contactors. Uh, so I get a lot of questions about what is a contactor? A contactor is just an electromagnetic switch. There's a coil in here, and if you apply a voltage to the coil, it uh, pulls open or closed the switch. So depending on the state of the contactor. So uh, that's what the load controller does. It just applies the voltage and turns on and off the contactor. So because a lot of our installers don't have a lot of experience working with contactors, uh, our feedback from the field is it can be confusing. And sometimes the process is not as easy to accomplish. So what I always recommend is once you've installed one, you, you kind of figured it out. You understand it, you've installed it, you got it working, you know how to do it. So what I recommend is you always pre-assemble the box that the load controller is gonna go into at your office, at your shop, at your warehouse, wherever it might be, even on your own workbench. So you pre-configure everything, pre-wire everything, and then you bring it as a kitted solution out to the field. Solar Edge is doing that for you. So we are working on a packaged design that includes either one load controller with two contactors or 
two load controllers with four contactors. And the idea is you're going to save time and money by not having to worry about how to crimp on your connectors, how to make sure you're wiring this correctly every time. Again, we're trying to save you time and money out in the field. And so we'll kit it all up. We have the UL50 box for you. Everything's pre-assembled, pre-wired. And all you have to do is take it to the site, install it, and then run some wires to and from it. So it's super easy to do. But if you decide to go down the path less traveled and wire it up yourself, there's multiple ways to install the load controller on a surface. So the load controller comes with some screws in the box that you can use to mount this to a piece of wood or to a piece of sheet metal. Of course, there's a, a slot here for a piece of double-sided tape adhesive. Uh, we also include that in the box. If you don't use that, then you can use the DIN rail mounting bracket. So in, this, in the box, we include screws to mount this to the DIN rail bracket. And now you can mount the load controller on a DIN rail like this. And so if your load controller is controlling a DIN rail mounted contactor, uh, this is a great way to mount both devices. So you can get these DIN rails, you know, really inexpensively at Amazon or something like that. Okay. So mounting could not be easier. Let's talk about how we configure the device. So during the installation process, if you've ever installed a Solar Edge product, you know you commission our inverters using an app called SetApp. You're going to commission this device using SetApp as well. So you need an inverter, and the inverter has to have the home network. All right, so you can install this on legacy inverters that are already out in the field and you want to add some load control as long as they're using the Solar Edge home network. All right, so we're going to log into SetApp. And we're going to go to, once this has got power supplied to it, we're going to go to Device Manager. And in Device Manager, you're going to be able to add the device, and then there's no association. So when we do a battery install, we have an association step, but we don't have to do the association step with the Device Manager. Once the load controller has been found, then there's no association and it's super easy to do. Uh, you might have a firmware upgrade, so that might take a minute or two, but we'll apply the firmware upgrade once the device has been added. Of course, if there are multiple load controllers that, let's say you have a couple of neighbors and you're installing multiple load controllers, on the devices you don't want to add to the inverter, you can put them in the hidden menu and if you need to access them later for whatever reason, maybe you accidentally messed up, uh, you just go to the hidden devices and you'll be able to find it. All right, so let's talk about when we set up our devices and we commission our system. Sorry. So when we set up our devices and we commission our system, uh, we're logged into setup. There's a couple of parameters that we have to configure in setup before we can give ownership to the homeowner, okay? One of those settings is the power rating. So we're not listing the power rating of the device that is being controlled. We're listing the power rating of the contactor, essentially. So up to 50 watts, most contactors are like, you know, three watts or four watts or five watts. They're not very heavy energy users, so it's just we have five watts. If you can't find it, that's not a big deal. You can list up to 50. So the other mandatory parameter that we have to configure is minimal uptime. So there are devices that we control that we don't want to cycle on and off very regularly or very quickly. Uh, if we think about some of the settings, we can set our load controller to operate with excess solar energy. And as a cloud passes in front of the sun, we'd see a sun drop in excess energy. And we don't want those devices to turn on and off every time a cloud passes in front of the array. So minimal uptime, the minimum is 30 minutes and it's usually geared towards like air conditioners and pumps, things of that nature. Uh, so I would tell you, yeah, minimum uptime is 30 minutes, uh, but you know, you can go more than that. You can say, yeah, if, if I'm running my pool pump, I want it to run for a minimum of two hours. So you can do that. So now that we know what the device can do, let's talk about how it can be programmed. 
After you're done setting up the load controller and setup, the configuration portion is done by the homeowner via the My Solar Edge app. Homeowners can set up the load controller however they see fit and manage it moving forward. If they need some help or additional assistance, they can grant you the installer access to the load controller so that you can help them set up the load controller via the monitoring platform where you're gonna see all of the smart energy devices and they'll automatically populate there once they're communicating to the server. So let's talk about the modes and the priorities. So there are three modes of operation and the priority listed here is the level of priority that each mode will get. So the highest level of priority is manual control. So the homeowner can turn on and off the device using this push button right here. So they'll turn, uh, they can open up the cabinet, they can push this button and turn on and off the contactor. They can also turn on and off the device in the My Solar Edge app. The next level of priority is uh, the schedule. So we can schedule the load to be on during off peak times or off during on peak times. So if we have a, a time of use window, like let's say our on peak time is from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., we can set the load controller to say, I never want my pool pump to run during that time because it costs a lot of money to run my pool pump at that time. And then the third level of priority is excess PV. So you can run all of these priorities at the same time or all these modes at the same time. You can set a schedule and you can say, but from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., if there is extra solar energy that is not charging my battery or that is being exported to the grid, I want to run my pool pump because I have extra energy. And it's just a better way to use your energy at that time instead of running your pool pump at night during off peak time all the time. Oh, and then lastly that I didn't list here is essential mode where basically when you go into backup, you can list this load as a non-essential device and it will turn off when you go into backup mode. So let's talk about manual control. So manual control, again, the homeowner can control the device, the load controller at the device or using the My Solar Edge app. And here's a good example. So you can see we have a hot water tank. There has been a schedule set uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. But again, if the homeowner turns it off at, the, at My Solar Edge, then they will turn off the, the load. That will have the highest priority. If the homeowner selects auto mode, so if you look at this gray circle right here, they select auto mode and nothing has been programmed, uh, they will see the following window where they can set a smart schedule or tell the load controller to work from excess solar power or they can do both. The smart schedule is fairly easy to set. You can program up to four time of use windows, if you will. Uh, so you can say, yeah, if your time of use windows vary on the weekend versus weekday, uh, maybe on the weekend it's from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on the weekday it's from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, so you can set up to four windows for your smart schedule. All right, let's get into how to wire the device because this is where most of the confusion comes from. Programming is relatively simple and straightforward and I get a lot of installers that say, I just don't know how to wire this thing to the contactor. I've never used a contactor or crimping tool or spade connectors before. So how do I do it? So I'm gonna walk you through on how to wire a 120 volt coil contactor and a 240 volt coil contactor. Now you have to be careful when selecting your contactors because sometimes they are also 24 volts and if you're using a 24 volt coil uh, then you need a auto excuse me then you need a transformer and uh, your wiring becomes much more complicated so i always recommend doing a contactor that has a 120 volt coil or a contactor that has a 240 volt coil so we'll go through both of those so now that we know how to program the load controller let's talk about how to wire the load controller. Now I'm just gonna cover the basics because I'm gonna do a live demonstration and we're gonna look at how to crimp on the spade connectors, where to connect them onto the contactor, but let's just kind of go over the anatomy of a contactor. 
So the contactor is always going to have a supply side and a load side. The supply side is going to be connected to the coil. So that's going to be always from the breaker to the supply side here. And then the load side is going to just go back to the load and you're not going to have any other connections on the load side. Okay. So these spade terminals on the bottom of this contactor are not going to be used. Only the spade terminals on the top of the contactor will be used. So there's multiple types of contactors. You can get DIN rail mounted. You can get uh, plate mounted. As far as the load controller is wired, it's going to derive all of its power from the connections that you make on the contactor. So that's why we are only going to wire on the supply side of the contactor. So let's get into the weeds and we're actually going to wire this stuff up. So stay tuned. Let me reset.